That said, <clears throat> hey everybody, welcome to Cubs Out Loud 462. Bet you didn't expect this shit. Uh, <laughs> it's an on the road show here at Drench for 14. And yes, in all of the insanity of putting on this event, I commandeered these two to sit down for a brief amount of time to talk about uh, bear run experiences. So I'm not a good candidate to probably talk about some of this stuff because I attend events and I put on an event. So I'm very biased, I think. But what I wanted to know from you guys, so, oh, we should do introductions for those of you that don't know. Obviously, I'm Gary, one of the co-hosts. Chester is out on assignment with uh, the, the um, what do I call them? The taste buds. They're out on the, the beer tour. So the bears are drinking beers uh, and probably getting drunk. But hopefully they won't be a mess when they get back. Never. We'll see how that goes. But he's one of the photographers for the vet, so he's out doing that. Uh, Damon is uh, got a week off, and so does Jeff, so lucky them. But uh, also, obviously, I have these two fine gentlemen with me. They both happen to be representatives of Kentucky, which is one of the most nicest states in terms of personality of men that I know, because they're always so sweet and nice. And I'm like, is it is that true? But that's another show for another day and how that goes. <laughs> but anyway, do you want to introduce yourselves for people who don't know who you are? I'm Ray Smith. Um, I'm from Louisville. Yep. Titles. Oh, uh, you want to go through that? I'm the Great Lake. Currently, the Great Lakes boot black. Um, you also may know me from Bluegrass Other Pride boot black, Mr. North American Bear 2016, Kentucky Bourbon Bear 2015, Tumblr, <laughs> and then the back alley of like a Wendy's. That White Castle. Well, you know, I'm trying to bottom this weekend, Some so I'm class. Oh, I'm sticking away. class. I've moved up. My that. city has class. We ain't got no White Castle, so <laughs> I'm all about that, that fresh, <laughs> never frozen now. Nice. Fresh meat only. Uh, and I am Aaron Hud. I am a Wuzzy currently. Uh, <clears throat> NAB Muscle Bear 2017. Uh, Mr. Kentucky Bourbon Bear 2012. Uh, Mr. Jim City Bear 2016. So you are currently titleless. Correct. So are, are we, are you done? No. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> some people, don't, like, they get it out of their system. Don't tell Sam that. <laughs> don't watch this at home, honey. Um, <laughs> nothing like to tell you're about to be husband. Oh, by the way, <laughs> I'll back in the ring. After May the 12th, I'll tell him then. Oh, nice. <laughs> Hopefully he doesn't watch YouTube or anything. No, he doesn't. Okay. <laughs> um, but you are current, right? For, yep. With Great Lakes? Yep. Okay. And then you are competing for international? Yes, in September. Okay. So, um, but you, would you say, Ray, that you've balanced your bear and leather events? Or is it a little bit more, I'm thinking more you've done a little bit more in leather in the past year, so it might be. Yeah, I would, well, I would say that. This year, well, in the past year, the leather and the bear uh, events have actually been more balanced um, because I'm still going to like North American Bear, I'm still going to Drench Fur, I'm still I'm going to Atlanta Bear Fest, so I'm balancing all that out. I'm just just collecting more leather events I'm going to now. When you said collecting, I was I wasn't sure where the next line, where part of that line was going. I was like collecting coin, collecting numbers, like. I'll take whatever. It's a recession. Tumblr followers. Nice. <laughs> he is Tumblr famous, as was discussed what last night in the uh, in the hallway. Wait, what? Of <laughs> when we were when we were outside the hotel foyer, remember? At about like four in the morning, and there was a discussion, and a certain cubby was here, and it was like, I have you have led to many like late night like enjoyments before falling asleep. Do you not oh yeah, 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 I do. <laughs> I was like, do you not remember this? It was like, I'm like, I was tired, but I was there for that. I right, sorry, I heard the conversation. It was like two thirty in the morning. I was exhausted. I was like, uh, I just need to go to sleep and get my seat back, but I can't. <laughs> so yeah, um, it is Friday of the run weekend. Normally, I would try to record on Saturday, but uh, there's a brief window of time on Friday that's a little bit better, being right now. Uh, Saturday, I can't remember what's happening, but I'm always like, mm, that's not necessarily going to work. So. Um, this is it. Uh, the weekend has begun. Day one is over. Day two is underway. And then we get to day three, and then the end is on day four. Uh, we, we'll be here before we know it. Yeah. Well, last night we got probably, I would say, about 80 to 82% of the people arrived. 
we were like at about 79 to 80 and then i was watching like there's probably a good like six seven eight people that showed up after brunch check and it closed um and i was just too damn tired no offense to like try to get them checked in and out not that it's an arduous deal but um and then more people have been showing up today so i think we're down to like maybe 10 percent left to arrive and now we're at that stage where there might be some no shows shocker i know it's hard to believe and that is a difficult part because people talk to me about it. They're like, I want to be on the wait list. And how do I know when I'm going to... Well, I kind of don't know. Like, people could literally roll in at, like, 10 p.m. tonight, and they're still a part of the weekend unless they call and let us know that they're not coming. So there's a reason that you book, and there's a reason you reserve, and then make sure you do the reverse um, kind of thing. But, yeah, my understanding is that for both of you probably, your experience at a lot of bear events has probably been more on the side of either working the event or volunteering the event than necessarily just going on a whim to attend it. Does that seem fair, or...? Um, yeah. I actually have a, a pretty big mix. There's a lot of times I will volunteer to do stuff, but I have been asked to come to certain events solely to be there as a representative and not do anything. So I got to be there and enjoy the event. That sounds like, you're pretty, we just want you to stand around and, and that's it. It's not a complaint. I'm just clarifying. I'm like, I was like, wait, is that a fair assessment? Like, they just want you to be there because of title or, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. But do you think, though, also, I mean, this is just me, sorry for interjecting, but, like, do you think, though, like, also being there, too, that, like, you feel like also you have to work sort of in that on moment of where you're, like, always being peppy and happy and like, hi, how's it going, being very social? And, well, yes. I yes. Mean, that's, so, because that's, I'm there, I'm going to be there to represent Right. North American Bear, yeah, or Gem City Bear, or Kentucky Bourbon Bears, whatever. Right. So yes, it's I'm, still I'm gonna be on. I'm still working. working. Yeah. Right. I just don't have a shift. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have a crazy run coordinator putting you into a scheduling <laughs> website apparatus that constantly pings you and is like, "Hey, Aaron, in ten minutes you have a shift. Hey, Ray, in four minutes you have a shift," and you're just like, "Stop talking to me." No, it was good. It woke me up for my nap. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> There you go. Um, we started using that app, by the way, uh, a year ago. I had uh, been searching for two years online to go digital because the committee hates my massive Google spreadsheet. They're like, this is too much. And I'm like, not for someone who has OCD and is very visual because, like, it's all laid out in one big old thing and like, they didn't care for it. And then, so I used to literally, like, copy paste a hand type and then send them individually. And then it was a problem because then if you made one change, I had to reprint everybody's stuff. So then when I found this online solution, I was like, wow, this looks really good. So we use actually a scheduling system that's meant for businesses. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's a little odd because it talks about positions and shifts in employees and managers. And it's like, it's not meant to be run like a business, but it does pretty well. It works. So yeah, it's well, been a, it's been a very efficient system. Yeah. So, um, but I'm happy with, with how it's working out. I'm still transitioning and getting comfortable with remembering to look in it to understand and know where everybody is because I was so used to that spreadsheet for years that I'm converting over to that. So, um, but the reason I wanted to talk to you guys is that you kind of represent an evolution for our particular event. For many years we had volunteers, but the volunteers were already run attendees who were just picking up like an hour here or a couple hours there, kind of out of the goodness of their own heart type situation. And I've been approached for many years and people were like, I'll come to your run if you count me everything and I'll do whatever you want. And I don't like that blanket statement because it's basically like, I will be your slave 24 seven for like four days, which I'm like, first of all, never do that. <laughs> Second of all, people take advantage of you mm -hmm. and not the way you want probably. So I was like, no, like that just, just so risky in weird ways. It makes me feel very uncomfortable. Like, because then I feel responsible for you and your experience, like, on a right. heightened level compared to just an attendee. Yeah. And I know that by personality, you guys have seen me now the past, what, you've been, this is your third, third year here, yeah. and Aaron, this is your second. second. So you guys know what run mode me is like versus any other day. Right. And one of the things I know I have a really difficult time with, like, that Adam, who puts on NAB and about to be a uh, World Bear Weekend does, and Adam's here as a vendor... I love him so much, but you guys have this great Southern hospitality kind of personality, and it's just not me. I am very Northeastern, like, to the business, got to get shut done, and it's like, so I know, like, I'm walking faster through the hotel, I'm not smiling at people, I'm, like, not paying attention, because I'm, like, duck and cover, like, I'm trying to get through crowds of people that are standing around, and, blah, 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 and it's kind of like, and they're all like, hey, Gary, and I'm like, hi, and I just keep, I'm on a mission, I gotta go, I got a thing to do, 
Um, I think it's just a personality piece. Yeah. So I know that, especially for first timers, they're probably like, "What a dick!" Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, he doesn't really take time. But I kind of, in a way, rely heavily on you guys as what I guess I kind of think of now as like mega volunteers or super volunteers, and my other committee members who uh, have been delegated to things while I'm trying to like run the entire operation while having one foot in doing whatever that other stuff is and so i appreciate that others hopefully are massaging my roughness so to speak or my my uh business kind of aspect of those things but um when will be your rhinestones i hey <laughs> girl, you be the tiara i don't care <laughs> the the thing for me is that um i'm i've been slowly coming around to the understanding that you can have full-time volunteership, but my feeling on it is you need to have established good relationships with people that understand your personality, understand the flavor of the event, and then really also can rise to the occasion about execution. Like, you guys kind of understand how I operate here. I don't know, based on other events that you've been to for volunteering or working, to me, I constantly see this event as not a Swiss watch, but it's intricate and there's a lot of things going on constantly even though the layperson may not see it and so it's always about fine-tuning and this little thing and that other stuff and then and i'm thinking like six 17 steps ahead about how we're going to handle this i don't know if that's normal like i know a lot of it is my personality but i don't know if other events are kind of operating on that level because i've been to some and i feel they're very kind of like oh, everything's kind of laid back and whatever and, this and, this and, and it's not that it's a, a bad event i kind of get jealous of that you know, like, laissez-faire, like, oh, things are good, things are good, you know, and it's like, and it seems like things are fine. So there's a part of me that's like, you know, like, wondering in the background, like, if I pull the curtain back, is it like, Wah! you know, like, <laughs> organized chaos, kind of, which is the way I think of this, or is it just different? I don't know if you guys can, I realize I kind of talked a lot to give you some things to think about, but. um, Honestly, I'll say from the events that I've worked with, this is probably the most organized structured from 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 the working uh point of view because i mean i've been to bear runs where it's like well shit the lunch is an hour late what are these bears gonna eat and it's just like bears are angry they want their food they want their tacos but like you know here it's just like like if i'm ever wondering like where am i supposed to be it's like Oh, let me look at this schedule that Gary gave me. Like right there, right there. Like and I love it because like like I can like okay, so I have to do this at this time, this at this time, this at this time. I can have sex here, I can take a shower here, I can do I can go get sheets get the here. Hot tub here. Yeah. Like and for me it allows me to plan out my day so I know what to do and when to do it and where to be. And so I love it. And I think I think personally that kind of work in the background you run that tight ship, so the people that are here at the event, they're not getting any of the chaos that we're experiencing. They're just kind of going and like, oh, we need to be here if we're going to be here. Oh, the bus is already here. That's perfect. It's on time and everything. So right. they get to actually experience the event and not have to wonder, like, what's going on? Because they just know it's there. And I really right. like the fact that um, you know, you, you're you very particular about making sure that the staff have their shirts, so they're easily picked out by the by the attendees. Well, let's let's clarify. I'm wearing this year's like DF shirt, obviously, uh, for day two. So like we had a polo for day one, which was kind of. A, I know we got a lot of compliments on them, and I'm very happy about that because not only did I pick them, but uh, my this event. I won't call it an organization because it's not a club, but this event got recognition this past summer at Pride. So the local uh, Northwest PA Pride Alliance, the Pride organization. They decided to start recognizing entities that have been contributing to the community for 10 years or more. Mm -hmm. And so since it had been 13 years of Drenched Fur in existence, they actually awarded us with this recognition. And we were going to be at Pride, and they wanted to call us up on stage, and they're going to give us an award, and we get a letter from the state, from uh, our senator. like, And I was like, well, this is sort of a big deal. Like, yeah. But we didn't work towards it. It just happened. And I was like, well, I don't want us to look like crap walking up there and just be all mix match or whatever. I was like, I want a United Front. Mm -hmm. So, and I wanted to pay back to my committee who a lot of these guys have been here for a handful of years, if not longer. And so I was like, and I know in like businesses where I was thinking corporate culture, it's like, you get a pin or you get a little thing. And I was like, 
no offense, fuck that. I was like, I want something practical that they can use, but I want it to be good. And so I reached out to who does our towels, and I told uh, Jeremy there, I said, all right, I need all the bells and whistles, and then I need about three versions. So, like, show me top of the line, and then uh, the one that doesn't make my eyes bulge out, the one that doesn't make my wallet scream, and, you know, like, <laughs> right. so I could figure out what was affordable. Right. And then we ended up going with those. And I was so happy yesterday. A lot of people complimented on them. And it was funny because I was like, yes. Like, not only do I know it's visually working, but people are like, those are really nice, and I kind of like that, and this mm -hmm. and that. And some people made comments because I put service time. So it says your first name and then how long you've been with the committee. So it could be, like, uh, two plus years, five plus years, or ten plus years. So they're kind of categories. So you can wear them for multiple yeah. times. Well, so, so so to jump onto what Ray was saying about right. it being a little hectic for us, but we know where we're supposed to be. For attendees, it was nice because every time they had to be somewhere, it was easy for them to say, okay, that person in the blue shirt is obviously right. here right. for this position, and they know they can come to them and ask questions. Yeah. Or if they see us running around the, the building, they can stop us. Right. Yeah. So. so so we did the polos yesterday because we talked, and I was like, I think I really want to put the best stuff on the first day. And then the second day is this year's theme shirt, so it has our logo uh, screened on the back. And so this is just a, a lightweight, easy kind of you know throw-on uh, type shirt. And then actually uh, Gabe, who's been on COL, he gave me a hug today, and he's like, I really like the feel of this shirt. He was cracking me up to no end, <laughs> and I was like, it's just a shirt. Like, it's just... It's a lightweight kind of rayon, whatever. <laughs> I said, it's good in every aspect but one. Velcro in this. Snags on it. Yeah, they don't like each other at all. So I'm like, you just got to kind of keep those two separated. <laughs> but no, so, um, and then tomorrow and Sunday, I was like, if you have an older shirt, like last year's wrench for a shirt or any previous year, like, because I just don't, I wasn't going to supply four days worth of attire. Yeah. And I wanted you guys, um, whether you're volunteers as part of the staff or the committee, to have a little relaxation as the weekend goes on. Because the key about this size event is by the time we get to tomorrow, day three, a lot of the faces have seen our faces, so they start recognizing, oh, this is a person who's kind of working the event, so I, if I have a question, I can ask them. Yeah. So it, to me, it's about kind of like a, I guess, a curve drop-off on a graph. Like, like oh, here's like the, how much the frequency, and then over time. So by the time we get to Sunday, Brian should be like, oh, him, yeah, that's the yeah, guy in charge, whatever. Let's go ask them. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, so the visual representation is a key piece that I hope works well with all that other stuff in the background because I've been to events and that's one of the things that I always work on. So if anybody out there is working on events or thinks they want to work on an event, when I get asked about like, what are some things to do to be successful, do everything the way you want to do it, especially if it's not the way you like it being done someplace else, meaning you go someplace and you're like, I really don't care for this. Obviously, don't do that. If anything, do the opposite of it. Like, find the other way of handling something. Adam and I were commiserating last night talking about stuff. NAB is four times the size of this event. I can't imagine trying to, one, run it, and two, the way we do some things would not scale well. It's just right. that you're, there you're talking about a population index issue. So, like... We have a committee of 10, and then we've got three uh, individuals who are basically <coughs> what I'm calling like super volunteers who are like pretty much putting in almost the same amount of time as some of the committee members or associates. So the – but that's just for this size event. What I don't know is, is it fair to say multiply that times four for NAB or – are you able to, like, work more – and I know you guys can't answer this really, but is it, like, working more magic? Like, do you just supply, like, crack or meth to everybody to keep them <laughs> running through the weekend? Or maybe it doesn't necessarily, you know, do its thing. Um, but you guys have been to all sorts of different events, so I imagine everyone kind of has a, a flavor on how they keep the the motion going or the people in the, the jobs and that kind of stuff. Not jobs, but duties. Yeah, I mean, with NAB even, they have – I mean, they have volunteers, but also, like, they have, like, their board and, like, people that are in the actual uh, Kentucky Bourbon Bears group, and right. those are, like, your main ones. But, I mean, they advertise a lot of, if you want to work four to eight hours, at, you know, during the run, right. we can help give you discounts, um, which I think it works, but also, though, it can be a it can struggle. Lead to, oh, so-and-so didn't show up for the weekend, or, oh, they didn't come yeah. to their shift. And so now who are we going to call to come do this? Yeah. And you really don't get to know that person either. So and I think even when you have bigger events like that, that can be an issue that you can run into is that mm -hmm. you have 
you have to pull from the community and you really don't know who they are. So you don't know if they're going to be able to show up on time, if they're going to, um, you know, be able to do the work in general. So that's one thing I, I really enjoy about smaller events is that when you have that, your volunteer staff that you know personally, you know what they're capable of, you can better like point them to the right direction on what jobs or duties will be right. best fit for them. And right. It's, it works well. And I feel like that also helps with the dynamics between the, the volunteers. Yeah. Because each volunteer starts to learn, okay, well, this one's really good at this, and this one's really good at this, and right. I may have an issue that I can't I can't resolve, but I know, right. well, let me call AJ and see if AJ can do what he can do, or, right. or Elliot, so. Right. No, and I think that's that's key, like, to their cohesiveness, like, how the team works together, and that's that's also something to be said for consistency. Like, I know we get complimented about our event, and in one key area I just have to chalk it up to I've been I've created the event with John Riley back in year one and carried it forward ever since and I've got a handful of us that have been here every year since the very beginning and a couple more came on a little later and have stayed a couple more came on a little later and that's not to say we haven't had people come and go I mean even this year as an example Aaron you stepped in when I had a committee member that uh, isn't with us for this weekend um, and I was like uh okay that's a chunk of time now I got to figure out how to replace. And so I talked to the rest of the committee. I was like, how do we want to handle this? I mean, we could just throw out a bunch of volunteer hours and be like, who else wants more time to like help out at the event? Um, and we have a different compensation model. Some events do like half off or, or this kind of thing. And actually Gabe, who's been on uh, the show in the past, he helped me because probably about four years ago, I was like, what do you think's reasonable? Like, how do we work this out? So I ran some ideas past him and he shot them all down. <laughs> we and there's nothing wrong with it but he was like we live in an immediate gratification world so people want their thing now right. so to postpone it is a little tricky because you're expecting people to be okay with getting something later and it was a good discussion i was like yes but i need a commitment that you're actually going to show, show up, up now i don't want to give you the freebie and then you just not be here or worse yet you show up and you're here but you're not doing what you're supposed to do you know, I said, so, because my, my initial thing was it was going to be um, a refund on Sunday. So, like, you were here, you put all your time in, I'm just going to, like, give you cash back or whatever. And he was like, yeah, but that means I already spent all my money. You know what I mean? Like, I spent all my money and my time and my effort to get here just to have you turn around and kind of hand it back to me. And he was really good about playing devil's advocate. About, you know, he tried to have a couple different voices of each idea to help me understand these may not necessarily, this may not go over as you would like it to. Right. Like, and I didn't expect people to jump up and down and be like, that's the best thing ever. But yeah, I also... You're, not, you're never going to make everybody happy. So. Right. So even this year we made it, we increased the hours in two different categories about if you do this much, you get this. Um, but one of the things is I blended it. So either you can get an immediate gratification thing when the run's done, or you can get a forward paying thing to use for next year. So nice. you kind of pick amongst the, like... Do you want lesser hours, more hours, and then each of those? Do you want the Do you want the now, or do you want the right. the thing that pays forward? So, and my what so far, I believe from what AJ has been telling me, kind of coordinating volunteering, most people are going for the future payoff the future. thing well, that's because it it's about next year's event. Yeah, and that's what I was hoping is that if you're here and you're volunteering and you enjoy it, then you're like, I want to come back, and basically like I'm willing to do this gig again. Right. In the coming year, which is what's been beautiful about the two of you. When you came on, Ray, I mean, you had no idea what you were getting into in the beginning. And the first time I bring somebody in, even if we know each other, I get nervous because I think, okay, this is make or break. To me, it's like when you're dating someone or in a relationship, you know the road trip thing? If you road trip it and you spend 7 to 14 days with them in a vehicle going cross country, you will figure out whether or not this thing will last. Because radio stations, potty breaks – who drives, who controls what, all that kind of stuff seems to be stressors in a unique uh, encapsulated environment in a vehicle that kind of puts you in perspective about, do I really want to spend all of my years of my life with this person? And I feel that way about this event. Like, if we're friends, most likely, or are good acquaintances, and you agree to come in and be part of the fold, so to speak, and go to that level, that first year I'm like, well, we'll see what happens. Like, will you make it to the end? Probably. Will we still be friends? I don't know. <laughs> you might be like, you crazy bitch. No, I'm just not not having it. Like, like love you, love the event. Like, and I respect that. You know, some people have been like, like, you know, 
I did my time. We're, we're good. <laughs> yeah, and you get some people who are like really rambunctious and and I'll go get them, and they think they're going to be all right with it, and they're going to volunteer one year and do all the stuff, and then by the end of the run, they're like, oh, but that was not what I thought it was going to be. I don't want to do that again. Right. So, I whenever I go to Claw, I, I typically volunteer for Claw, mm-hmm. and they do, a, I, I think it's changed now, but you have to work so many hours, mm-hmm. and they take off so much from the run package. Like, you don't, yeah. you don't get a free run package, you get a percentage off. Right. So, well, Claw had an interesting structure probably about three years ago because Damon uh, goes to Claw and he tries to volunteer when he goes to him and Jim. And the one year I was, this is probably about two, year two out of like four years of this model project mm-hmm. tweaking. Damon was reading me what Claw's stuff was. And what I like, I don't think it's the same now, but at the time, what I really liked was your first year of volunteering, you pay now and you'll get some money back after you put in your hours. Then, all forward years, once you've kind of proven yourself you in the volunteer model, volunteer. you automatically can pay the lesser price to start. Yeah. And I thought that was a really interesting way of being like, well, listen, we don't know you that well, so like, we're just going to kind of like, you know, work the, through this now and each kind of own our pieces. And then going forward, oh, yeah, girl, we know you. Yeah, come on in. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I mean and then they also do another model that if you don't make your uh, volunteer shift, you go back off the list. And I think it's if, oh, you, that makes if sense. you do it twice, they don't allow you to volunteer anymore. So hmm. you I, get blacklisted. I, I was gonna say I kind of feel like twice is generous, but I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, well, stuff happens. Yeah. Well, but that's the key thing. Like it's about communication. Like yeah. somebody uh, contacted today and was you know they were trying to get here, and it feels like the force of life was just. Like, their job and other things out, just get right there right well they were like you know they contacted me on wednesday they didn't know if they're going to make it thursday then today i get contacted that a whole other thing unforeseen happened they're in the midst of moving and the moving company said no we're dropping your house off today either you're there to get it or not right and he's like i uh, guess i'm not going away for the weekend so he calls the hotel to cancel and they're like you'll have to talk to the person in charge because technically it's it's after the deadline so we have to charge you one night stay so they, this person doesn't really know me, but they had uh, tried to get in touch with me, and they know a committee member. So we triangulated so I could go talk to the front desk and be like, listen, this is a unique circumstance. Like, they're not trying to screw anybody over. So I was like, I'm giving permission to cancel without payment. Obviously, you know, they're kind of in a bit of a pickle as opposed to just no show and or, show or whatever, yeah. right? Yeah. So, but that's what I mean is communication is key. It's like if you call, if you, like, if you get through to people and, and talk to them, and I phrase it that way because... Well, it's year 14. It happens every year. I get texts. I have one today. I know you're really busy, Gary. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> if you know I'm busy, why are you trying? I hate to say that, but <laughs> what? So like, let's make the call to you yesterday. Like, hey, Gary. <laughs> well, that's different, though. <laughs> this person <laughs> kind of knows me, but it's like they Facebook know me. Like, we're oh, acquaintances. Okay. You know what I mean? And so I was like, well, if you really knew me, then you would probably know now's not the time, like, at the last minute to try to – So, it, but it's a double-edged sword. Like, I, I kind of flip-flop because I'm like, yeah, but one of the philosophies of life, though, is if you don't ask, you don't get. Right. So if they don't try to reach out, like, they're not never going to know the response or, or whatever. So mm-hmm. it's it's just difficult. And that's what I kind of wonder about with other events is, like, does I, – I think I'm – well, I know I'm a glutton for punishment – this event is a passion project for me. I put in all the time and the effort and the lack of sleep and all the rest of that shit because I love doing this that everybody gets to come together and have a good time. I don't know if anybody else really kind of operates at the insanity that I do. And I only ask say it that way because I go to other events and I know I'm very critical because not only do I put on an event, but I am very observant about stuff. And... One of probably my biggest pet peeves is going to an event and seeing people who are leading and they're not pitching it. I know that that's one way to handle it, but I'm not that way. So like today, we're taking on pipe and drape in the ballroom because I didn't want to pay the extra fee to have the company come back and take it down. And I was like, hell no, they can come get it on Monday. Right. So I was like, I need eight volunteers. Let's figure out how we do this. Bing, bang, boom, take it apart and all that. I'm in there folding drape, taking, you know, piping apart and all that kind of stuff. And while in there in the midst of doing it, I was like... How many other events do you see the person in charge running around doing that? And that's why I question. I'm like, like, am I not a good delegator, or am I? You know what I mean? Like, 
and that's not really fair to ask you guys. It's just my in my inner reflection about trying to to see myself while being myself. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, but I think though, you I mean you could say that it means that you're not a, de- a good delegator. But what it does show honestly is that you're not that you don't put yourself on this pedestal above like the volunteers. Like you listen to me and you do exactly what I say. He's like. You're like, no, bitch, let's get down and let's get this done. Yeah. Because I got other shit that I need to do, <laughs> so let's get this done. But I think, you know, I've seen some I've seen some events where people where will get together and help. Um, but I think you definitely go that extra mile. And I think in the long run, that makes you more of a relatable person. So you're you're not just this man behind the curtain. You're, mm. you're this person that's actually willing to say, all right, let's get this done. So. Well, and I've, I've always kind of had that work – and like concept of, I don't care who, who gets it done, just get it done. But I don't, I don't view it from the point of, I don't care who gets it done, get it done. It's just kind of like, I'll, I don't care, I'll do it. Like many a job in hospitality in my background, I wash dishes, I scrub toilets, like I took out the trash. Yeah. It does not matter to me because somebody's got to do it. And I just, I do not have that part of me where people are like, well, I don't do that. Because I've worked jobs where I've been a manager and I'd be like, oh, you don't? And then I edit myself because the next line of what I want to say is, and you never will. Yeah. Don't, don't talk to me like, you know, it's kind of a job refusal moment. Like, no, 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 no. Like, jobs, jobs are jobs. Everybody's got to do something, right. you know. Yeah, and you practice what you preach because, I mean, I'm not going to say exactly what the event was or where it was or when it was. But when someone comes into a meeting and they say, don't show up late and don't show up drunk, and then they show up 15 minutes late, and then they also openly confess that they had been – Drinking way too much on a on, a, on an alcohol tour. Oh. I'm just saying. No, no, no. no. I understand no, it was a that. Tasting. Oh, a tasting. Well, she, apparently this one understands your story. She tasted I've, a whole bottle. Girl. Girl. <laughs> tasted a whole bottle. She tasted the inside of it with her tongue and everything. Every last drop. I don't know what, who the person or whatever that is, but no. I mean, I've seen that at work though. Like um, with my previous job, it drove me crazy as a corporate trainer to see another trainer go through the guidelines. So no food at your station with the computers and blah, 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 and these type of containers and all that. And then later during class has a pop tart has it. And I'm like sitting there and I'm like, I cannot believe you have no offense. The balls as a woman to sit there <laughs> like that. And I'm like, really? And I'm like, I-, I can't like, I walk out of the room. I was like, there's, it's not the worst infraction in the world, but I was just kind of like, you expect them to take you seriously? Like, to right. lead by doing the exact opposite of what they're telling you? They like, just lose all credibility yeah. because yeah. of it. Yeah. So, are you saying that I'm credible? Don't answer that. You um, are incredible. <laughs> I'm insane. Well, I'm incredibly <laughs> sane. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, compared to your previous two years, switching tracks a little bit, and your past year, Aaron, What's it been like so far for the the day and a half ish? Um, is it like does it feel normal? Does it seem similar, or is it seem you know something stands out or is is unique or whatever? Um, I think it's kind of the same. I mean, now that this isn't my first or second rodeo, it's it's more like I can click on that mindset of this is what I need to do. This is where I need to be. And this is how I need to be. This is mm-hmm. like, um, so it allows me to have that kind of downtime when I need it. So I can rest. So I'm not burnt out by six o'clock at night when I'm trying to sell raffle tickets. Right. Like, so, um, I think it's going smooth, uh, on my side. I mean, everything's laid out. I'd know where to go, when to go. And mm-hmm. yeah, I like it. Okay. And I'm ex military. So if I have a set of orders, I'll, I'll go on them. So, and being a squid, I can fall asleep anywhere. So, whatever time, yeah, it's, floor, I have chair, I couch. Have, yeah, I have a committee member who's uh, ex-military. I have a contract entertainer that is ex-military, and then you. And I'm not advocating this, but I will say this: there's just something that gives a little bit of a, a breath of relief because you know if they have that in their background, then it's sort of an automatic. They understand, like, timing, execution, implementation. You know what I mean? Like, that's just part of, like, what you've been raised in within mm-hmm. the, the rank of the, the service. So, um, and that's something I appreciate because then 
hopefully, in a way, what I really like is that it rubs up on other people. Like, they can be like, oh, Aaron's always punctual and he's on time and he's, you know, and then people kind of see that and understand, like, oh, you know, that's admirable and maybe I would like to, you know, kind of represent that as well. Uh, and it's, it's so it's a, appreciated. I asked the question about the difference because last year, and I think I discussed this with you, Ray, I had really bad moments of deja vu. Now, maybe it was because it was year 13. I'm not superstitious, but four different times, by the way, my, the room I happen to have is right next to the pool. So if you heard some of the noise, but when we were down in the atrium pool area, there were several times last year, I'm looking at a space. And because this event now has been in this exact hotel, half of its existence, I had last year, six different years of the same thing. And we're, I don't want to say formulaic, but some things kind of happen at the same time, same place. And I had weird moments where I was like, oh, look, there's AJ doing blah, blah, blah. And now he's about to, and he doesn't. And then I'm like, what the hell's going on with me? Like, I don't, I didn't, was like, I'm like, am I having a quantum leap moment? Like, what is, what is going on? And then I started to realize, oh, my brain's broken. It's pulling memories from different years. And because some of it is the exact same pattern, mm -hmm. it's kind of impressing over it, almost like I could predict the next thing which wasn't always the truth. And so it was, it was just a weird experience last year to be like, Oh, and then this, and then it became a problem because I started thinking that I could rely because, well, that's, it's been done before. Everybody knows that's exactly what we're doing. No, you still have to go over it. Like you still have to discuss and make sure is it a sign? Do they know what's happening instead of presuming, you know, Oh, well, because you know, Bob like has always done this. Time. Bob knows exactly what he's doing. No, I still need to check in with Bob. Like make sure that he knows like, are you good? Do you have everything? Yeah. Uh, so that's something just kind of unique to me. In a way, I feel – I don't know that many other run uh, coordinators, but I kind of feel like, is there an old geezers club of, of, like, event people, like, where I can talk to them and be like, is this a commonality? Like, do you all find that sometimes you're just kind of, like, having weird deja vu in a moment? And, well, wait, what year was that? Was it this one or that? You know what I mean? Or Because I feel they like – stop going by years. They go by what, – what, what was the theme for that year? <laughs> well, I mean, internally within the committee, sometimes we, we earmark stuff by things that happen. Mm -hmm. So it's not even what the theme was or what the, the numerical year was. It was, oh, that's the year that blah, blah, blah happened. And unfortunately, it's the things that stand out that you remember. And the human brain has capacity for the more negative side of things as opposed mm -hmm. to the positive. So you're kind of like, oh, yeah, that's the year that the person got so drunk at the bar that they threw up on the bus on the way back. So when the bus driver pulls up to the hotel and I go to, you know, to see how she's doing, she – leaps off the bus to go inside to ask them for a mop and as she passes me not at a sprint but kind of as like you know at a gallop and she says um what did she say oh she said it so fast i didn't quite catch it it took a couple seconds to register she said you have a puker <laughs> but i didn't i the word puker, puker. wasn't computing at first because i was like i was like damn she must have to go to the bathroom like you know she just did, did, it, did it and then i was like oh we got a problem. Like, you know, we go clean the bus, like, before we take anybody anywhere. And then, of course, you end up with the infamous, don't sit there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, kind of thing. Um, but that's what I mean. Like, there's some yeah. things that kind of happen you remember this or, or that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and that, but, so we'll see how the rest of the weekend goes. I'm, I will fully admit it has not been a perfect launch. Uh, we had a series of things that came up unexpectedly last night. And, of course, as sometimes it happens, while one thing is occurring, then the next thing lands on you, and this. And I made a joke of it earlier. Um, do you guys both know Bert uh, from Delaware that's here? Mm -hmm. I'll point him out to make sure that you guys uh, meet him. He used to work on Bear Pride in Chicago as part of the committee. And he and I were talking a little bit today, and I told him, I said, yeah, after about the fourth and then the fifth thing came up, I was like, all right whatever like no 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 like it is day one we're gonna squash this right now like this is not going to be the year of nothing but fires non-stop all weekend that's not how this works like like so and it did it kind of calmed down but i was happy because i thought this is not the beginning of like a domino effect or a tidal wave i was like no nah. and it's part of it is just me kind of affirming like i got this we'll be fine just if there is anything that's I, pulling strings, stop the fuckery. I will say that from <laughs> from an outsider view, I didn't see. Yeah, I don't know what this. happened. So you did a you did an excellent job of 
hiding it from everyone else well, that it was going on. So, calling yourself out, girl. <laughs> no, I'll, like, I'll explain really quickly, because, I mean, some of it is, is already publicly known. The first thing that started to happen, unfortunately, is that our karaoke DJ, his external one terabyte hard drive got corrupted. And so he couldn't play any files off of it. And therefore, the karaoke software wouldn't work. So the whole thing came to basically a screeching halt. And he worked on it for like one to two hours before it was supposed to start and then all the way almost like halfway through actual karaoke and people were being kind of polite and nice and those that know him were checking in but i could tell he was pretty much having a meltdown because he's here to do this one thing and he can't do the thing that he's supposed to so i can understand where it's like you just feel like what the hell is going like and it took a while to sleuth what was happening. And so I checked in and, you know, and well, I think maybe it might be this. And so finally, when we got to the end and it was the decision, like, we're just gonna have to call it. I, I mean, when you click on a file and you try to pull it and it sees there's a file, but nothing will play, like not even just the MP3. They were like, oh, that's, that's not good. And there's nothing. That, and so I did like five minutes of brainstorming. I was like, did you have a cloud backup somewhere that we could maybe download? He's like, it's a terabyte. Even so, it would take a while. But see, what he doesn't know is I have a wiped terabyte, like, external sitting at my house that I just, like, a couple months ago took stuff off of. So in my brain, I'm like, I'll drive 15 minutes back to my fucking house and bring it back. Like, you know, we'll just trade it out or swap it. But he had good points. He was like, no, if it's a problem. So that happens. And then we have an issue with uh, someone hurting themselves. So I have to ask my paramedic committee member to get involved. So we do that. Not Nothing significant, just minor kind of thing. And then uh, I have to address a issue with um, communication from us to staff and their lack of knowledge about something. So both property and I owned because we talked about it and then I never sent them the thing. And because I didn't send it, they didn't think about they needed to explain. So that's always fun. So we both kind of like, yep, that was that was that was both of us. Uh, and then we have the incident with the canopy and the heater. <laughs> oh, okay. So, yeah, you guys see, so you guys kind of, so it's like, but all of that happened within maybe an hour. So I'm like, oh, I gotta deal with this, and then we gotta deal with this, and then, and then at the same time, I have people that are affected. So it's not just things, I have people who are taking a lot on emotionally, mm -hmm. and like very concerned because they want to do good by whatever it is that they do, whether they work for the hotel or they are part of the committee or they're hired for contract. Like, and that's probably the one thing that I, I feel bad about because I operate, I guess, like on high octane this weekend. I get concerned that people think I have insane, you know what I mean? Like expectations or such. I set such a high bar that like a failure isn't a failure. A failure is a catastrophe. And that's not how I want it handled, though. And that's where I try to tell them, like, we can work through this. Because yeah. that's where I'm like, it's been 14. It's going 14 years. Like, I've handled a lot of stuff, so, <laughs> you know. Is the building on fire? Nope. Yeah. You know. I mean, I have to think about, what was it, year 10 or 11 we were here? And the power went out? During dinner. That was fun. Yeah. So we're all in the ballroom. And it was a freak thing where the block lost <laughs> power. So... The whole building went, and we're all in the dining room, and we had just finished eating dinner, and I think we were doing announcements, and while I'm talking, all of a sudden it goes, boom, and it's just emergency lighting, and, it, and the room's like, oh, and then some people were like, woo, and then I heard one person, luckily it wasn't very loud, because the hotel staff did not need to hear this, they were like, instant orgy, and I was like, no, 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 because like, I'm pretty sure all the ladies in the catering staff don't want don't to want participate. To <laughs> no consent. And so I'm on the mic and then I just started laughing. And I'm sure that probably unhinged some people because they're like, uh oh, uh -oh he's lost it. Right, he broke. He broke. <laughs> this was the one. She gone. Bye. On edge. <laughs> but in my mind I was like, of course the power goes out. You know, it was kind of one of those like, now what? You know, and it wasn't a year that we had a lot of stuff, but to me it was so comical and someone did say to me they're like did you think it was a sign from god to shut up <laughs> like just cut the power like <laughs> girl you're yanking too much get off yeah. there no um it was uh it was it was an interesting year so that taught me in that moment i was like as much as i might be high strung i'm like it ain't that big a deal and this is the thing i i come back to i tell people because i had um 
and I've talked a little bit on the podcast, because I had a significant life event in which I faced my own mortality, I spent the next solid year, every day, a lot of time saying to myself, in the end, does it matter? Because I had to reprioritize and say, do I need to worry about this? Is it really that big of a deal? How much, like... How much effort and energy am I going to put into whatever that is? And I learned to just like be like, when I am gone, does it matter? Like, will this be any significance? And I realize that's probably pretty heady for some people, but it vastly changed my outlook. And I'm not perfect, but I'm just kind of like, there's. I think that's the voice in my head where it's just kind of like, you could be gone one day. We all are, yeah. at least as of right now. Technology might change that, but so I'm just kind of like. Ain't that big a thing when it comes to that. So I uh, so that's why last night I did have a brief moment where I was kind of like, if I'm being tested, <laughs> when we start hitting like the five and the six mark of things in a row, I'm not playing cards. We don't. This is not about what best my hand is or however you want to phrase it. In that case, um, any other thoughts you guys have? Is that because I'm thinking we're gonna wrap up about volunteering and how your experiences have been and what what's next on the horizon. I mean, I think, honestly, this has been... I've always thought, as far as Drench Fur, it's one of the top bear runs to go to. Um, because of it being so low-key, not a huge amount of people, but also because of it running very smoothly. At least from my perspective, even. Like, it could be... In your head, it could be like a total shit show, like something's on fire. But for me, it's it's right. feel, it's like a field full of roses. It's with no thorns. It's, it's great. And so... I appreciate the compliment, but it, it makes me wonder something, and then I get uncomfortable. I know I don't go to that many events, but I think because of titles and that you guys have traveled around or been asked to go to places, when you say it's one of the best that's out there, it makes me wonder what the others are like then. Well, I mean... Do, I, do you know what I mean? Like, so and this isn't about me trying to pat myself on the back. It, it concerns me so there's about a, the experiences so of there, So there's a large event that happens in Dallas, I mean Texas, um, <laughs> that you would think after 20 some years that they would have it laid out and they would know how they're going to do their contests and yeah. it should be here to here and when you spend five hours in a ballroom oh, let me rephrase that half a ballroom for their contest yeah, and it keeps going and it keeps going and it keeps going and the whole audience starts singing, this is the show that it never ends. ends. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's obvious that it's not being run uh, smoothly. Yeah, but I think also you your run adds a twist that not a lot of people, like, I mean, it's a bear run. Yeah, there's going to be food, there's going to be dance parties and butt stuff, but there's, yours, like, has that unique twist. <laughs> I'm sorry, that just broke me. I was like, is that a new tagline? <laughs> bear runs. Full of buffets, dance parties, and butt, butt stuff. stuff. <laughs> Smashy, if you end up watching this, maybe we'll have a new shirt being served somehow Drench with a twist on Buffets, dance parties, and butt <laughs> stuff. Um, no, but, like, I think the fact <laughs> that like like one of the big things of the event is on Saturday we go to a water park like I think yeah. that when I when I mention that to people they're like wait what you all go to a water park yeah hey, we got a pool and a hot tub but I mean there's a water park I mean yeah. you just take over a water park who doesn't like that but the legacy of the event for me is funny because for the first what uh, nine years was it yeah um, no not uh, first let me see, four, five, six. First six years, we did not have a pool. It was just the water park was the only water that was involved, even though it was called Drenched Fur. Then uh, we were here, years seven and eight, we had a pool. And the very first year we were here with the pool in the atrium that's out there, we had so desperately like mismeasured the impact the beast that's, that space is. It is a nexus. It's like the draw. It's the nervous system the of the kitchen. building. It's the kitchen right. of the hotel. Right. Everybody yeah. wants to hang out there, whether they're in the pool, out of the pool. Kind of. I mean, look right now. There's people just kind of standing like along the railing and mm -hmm. watching and oogling. They're voyeuring, whatever they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know? And so we just did not imagine, because the way that schedule went that year is we presumed when this was done and this started in the ballroom that people would leave the pool. And, you know, kind of like on a cruise, like they leave the Lido deck and go over here. Mm -hmm. Oh, hell no. So I remember um, our contracted entertainment 
I told them, I said, we don't know how many people are actually going to come to the, you know, the ballroom. So I come and it's like already 15 minutes after it's supposed to begin. And I know that they're delaying start. One of them walks up to me and says, so we were going to wait like another 15. I was like, no, you will wait five. And they just looked at me and I was like, <laughs> I contracted you. We established our start and stop times. This show does not delay further. I said, remember when I said you might be performing just for the catering staff? Not joking, bitch. Like, <laughs> if the bartenders are the only ones in the back of the ballroom watching you do your little shtick, ta-da! Because guess what? You're still getting paid by me. So, and, and it was funny because, well, Steve, who's on the committee now, of course, he's in the pool when this happens. I come back around, and I, I'm doing a visual head count. So I, if you pay attention, you'll you'll see my tell. So I'm just walking around, I'm kind of smiling, and I'm looking. But I am literally, because I used to work for an inventory, a couple of them, I'm like, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Like, and I'm trying to do a head count to figure out, like, what's the impact of this space? Steve's in the pool, and he sees me. And he's like, oh, hi, Gary. And then I lock eyes with him. And then he was towards the edge of the pool, and he starts, you know how Steve is. So he starts acting up, and he's like, He's like, no, I didn't do it. Get away from me. And he's like <laughs> trying to backstroke away from the edge of the pool, making this huge scene like I'm going to beat him or something. And he, and so he calls. Oh, the R. Yeah, really. Not again. I promise I won't again. And so, I mean, it was just silly. And I knew we've known each other forever. And I was kind of like, but I, I imagine newbies are kind of like, what the hell is that drama about? And they're like, <laughs> so anyways, he said, is everything okay? I said, yeah. And as I'm getting ready and I'm walking the full loop and I'm getting ready to walk out of the atrium, he goes, he goes, when does that music thing start? I said, five minutes ago. And he goes, oh, oh, like it, he clicked. He's like, that's why you're in here. But I wasn't telling people to get out of the pool and go. I've heard horror stories about that. Yeah. That other events dictate where you are and when you are. And I still don't understand that. One, how it happens, and two, because I've never experienced it. Because I'm like, who the hell tells people this is where you will be at this time? Like, yeah, there's a schedule, but it, I mean, it, it's optional. Right. Like, I've never heard, I don't understand events that people give me the impression, like, no, then you don't have to be there. Yeah, well, I mean, like, I've been I don't in, understand that. it runs with a pool party with, like, 100 plus guys in, in a pool party. And, like, people getting, the DJ getting on the microphone, like, Everyone shut up. Keep quiet. Quiet down, people. It's like, it's a pool party with a loud echoing. It's echoing like crazy. And you're trying to tell 100 plus people to be quiet? Why were they telling them to be quiet? That's be the part where I'm tripped up. I'm like... Because they can't play their music, so they have to crank their music up louder. And it's like, that's just making people talk louder. And oh. Then... Right. So, I'm probably going to get hot water for saying this, but... It ain't about you, honey. Mm-hmm. You are the background. You yeah. are the wallpaper. You are not the center of attention. You got paid to be there, do what you're doing. Jeffro taught me that. Like, mm -hmm. he's an artist performer. And when I went and saw him at a couple of venues, um, in the early years when we started becoming friends, I struggled because I would go places and I could not get over how people were not paying attention to his ass. I was like, this man is fine. He is talented. Shut your pie hole and pay attention to the man on stage. Because that's just the, always that's how I was raised. It's like it's an entertainer. You go to see them, you pay attention. So I talked to him afterwards, and he was like, "No, it's okay." And it was so funny because I was like, "No, it's not." And he goes, "No, I still got paid." Yep. A gig is a gig. I got paid. He's like, "Whether they pay attention or they don't," he said, "I've done them all. I've done them where like the entire audience can't hear a pin drop, which is a little creepy." But you know, the, I say that. He said, and then I've had, like, I've been in places where I'm like, why? I'm thinking, why am I here? Oh, that's right, I'm getting paid. Because <laughs> no one is paying attention to you. He said, it's all sorts of stuff. He said, and that really taught him. And then he, he gave me that lesson. I am but here to fill the silence. I am here to avoid the awkwardness or the emptiness. So I'm the background. I'm the wallpaper. I'm the whatever. And I was like, oh, I get it. Like, you are not here to be in the spotlight. That's a different kind of production or whatever. You are just here to be whatever. So it it I find it really interesting. So to hear you talk about where the DJ like is trying to out audio the the noise of the I'd be, I'd be the first one to be like knock that off. Yeah. I'd be like let me see your board. That mark don't move above it. I might threaten to break their finger, which I wouldn't. <laughs> but you know it's kind of like no nah, like that's that's. That's crazy to me, but that's me. Like, and I realize that some people might be like, Jesus, aren't you bossy? This is about everybody's experience, not just a person's experience. I mean, exactly. don't get me wrong. Every person's experience is important, but I try to, I try to instill this in people. I love you dearly, Ray, but your bubble is not more important than my bubble. And I think you understand that. 
But I know people who don't get it. Don't. And they're kind of like, no, my bubble is important. And I'm kind of like thinking to myself, depending on how the conversation goes, one of one of the aspects of my personality is kind of like, I'm about to pop it, bitch. Like, don't. <laughs> no, like, yes, we all live in our own personal world. That's what I mean by a bubble. And it is important, but you are part of a larger thing. So it's not always going to be centered and focused on you. Right. So how about we all get along, you know, to have a good time in that case? And I think that's what makes workers at an event even, and volunteers, the best ones, where they're not like, oh, I'm doing registration. Hi, you're going to talk to me because I'm doing registration. All eyes on me. And they're like, I'm here to just get you through. I want to make sure your experience is smooth, not because I need to take selfies while I'm checking in every person, because... They want to make sure it's smooth. So they You see how like that's just driving me nuts here in these descriptions. I'm like I'm twitching, I'm like <laughs> uh, part of me is like, who this bitch? Fire her <laughs> I would feel that way if I if it was a job and I had to run into that, let alone at an event. I'd be like Exactly. What's what's up with that? Well, I know what that's about. Anyway, it's a whole other I, show. I will I will say this one really, really quick. So I have made a few really good friends by volunteering through events. Mm-hmm. At Claw, <clears throat> I always volunteer with for the silent auction. That's one of my favorite things to work. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I have four people that have been friends for six years now because I met them while we worked silent auction. Yes. And I would have never, never run across them had I not volunteered to do that. Yep. Well, I mean, look at what happened with us. Ray and I are... Close, I think it's fair to say. I realize I'm like, I'm about to say shit, and Ray might be like, you think. <laughs> we met because of NAB because of you winning the title. Yep, and you gave me a t-shirt. Well, I will own, comes out loud, I was totally networking the maneuver. I was kind of like, we haven't really talked to a title holder. Like, we've talked to people who have competed at NAB. So we had, you know, uh, Matt and Chess and some other people on that. Um, you know, and, and yeah, the, there's a not winning and then later winning kind of component or whatever. But when you got up there, you had a, an electricity kind of about you, and the room was kind of like, who dat? Now, there were several layers. I'm not going to dispute the fact that some people were very thirsty, as deservedly so. But then there were other people who were kind of like, who is this guy? Like, what's the story with him? And that was kind of the angle I was hoping, like, this would be interesting to get to know him if there's a chance. So that's why I approached you afterwards, knowing, like, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'll just let it go. But... As soon as you win, it's not like RuPaul's Drag Race or, you know, Miss America or even Survivor or whatever. You know what I mean? Like the whole world has your attention. But within our community, you kind of suddenly get vaulted because of this title, whether it be Mr. You know, North American Bear or the other titles in the family grouping. But now people might approach you and want stuff from you or mm-hmm. ask stuff of you or whatever. And I didn't want to be that way about it. So that's why when I was talking, I was like, I was trying really hard to be the middle of we do this thing if you're interested it's kind of okay blah 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 and you were very open and receptive to it i mean i don't know if giving you the shirt helped or not but it's a running joke with ray and i i was wearing a shirt and he really liked it so i literally just gave it to him because i was like you can have it if you want I wasn't i wasn't that a, it's a great shirt don't oh, get me it's wrong absolutely wonderful that's uh, what it was gary stripped for you and that's why you went on the podcast wasn't it <laughs> If you need something, just send me nudes, <laughs> or let me just see a strip, or give me shirts. I was like, I was just gonna say, I have not sent you nudes and I have not stripped for you. I'm like, so this you is just really. You took the shirt off your back and gave it to you. But not like in person. If anything, oh. you actually you actually stripped in front of me in your room, if you remember that. Oh yeah, I did. I was... <laughs> he was exhausted from the, from winning the title, mm-hmm. and he's like, I have to go back to my room, and you remember this. I need to charge my phone because it is literally dying. Oh, you were bringing this up. And then up. you were, and then, no. Okay. And so we go back to the room. <laughs> Calm your tits. We go back to the, his room, and so that's when we were talking and stuff, and I was like, you know, I have an extra charger available. Um, and, sorry, my screensaver came on, so we panicked like the camera shut off. Uh, and so I gave you one of mine to borrow. Yeah. Like, that was just kind of the way I was feeling about it in that moment. I was like, oh, you need something? Like, it's not that big a deal. Like, you borrow it. I'd already made a presumption of the character of the person that you are in that time of seeing you on stage and then getting a chance to talk with you. That's all that that was. So, and I, and because I've been willing to say, you know what? Sometimes you just need to be able to let go. 
So, like, if I never, it's kind of like loaning money. Some people ask me, they're like, someone kind of needs some help. Do you think I should help them out, give them some money? I always say the same thing. If you're willing to lose it and never get it back, yes. It's that simple. It's like gambling. It's like, so if someone needs $1,000, $100, whatever it is, if you're willing to release it, not knowing if you're going to get it back, then yeah, if you're comfortable with that. But if you think this will be a thing or make it weird or awkward, then you might not want to do it. You might find, you might want to find another way to be supportive or to do something. Yeah. It's kind of, so to me, that's where I was like, the shirt thing was just kind of silly, but then you were like, I need a charger. I was like, I have an extra charger. Cause I think you had a spare like portable charger, but it was already dead too, I think, or something. I think so, yeah. I don't know. But, uh, so yeah, it's a, but we met purely by circumstance and that's why I bring it up. I didn't think by seeing you on stage, then win the title, talking to you afterwards, and then it just evolved. Like we had you on the podcast, you and I stayed in touch, we've talked, we've commiserated, um, we've been through a whole range of emotions yeah. <laughs> over the years. And so, you know, and that's, to me, that's what's amazing as an evolution. I mean, look at Jeff Workman. He, the, he and I met because of this event, because he got hired with part of Bearpalooza. And then we became friends and now we're best friends. I mean, you know, and so it's just sometimes that stuff happens that way. So I, I think it's a good point that you bring up, Aaron, that people are like, you just go to do something. You don't know what it holds, where it'll, where it'll play itself out at. Yeah. That's awesome. Sounds like it's a good note to wrap up on. I think uh, we've kept the show pretty short enough as it is. So hopefully the background noise wasn't too bad or the AC. I wasn't going to torture actually all three of us by shutting it off because um, it's been a little balmy. Oh, I did get – this is nothing important to the audience. I got a, a notification from the hotel because – there have been so many requests, they just turned off the heat altogether. Oh, that's why I got better. So they said, but wait, this is the best part. They said, but if you need us to turn it back on, basically, like, you have to tell us, which is kind of comical to me. So now I'm feeling like, like, if I already am not viewed kind of ridiculously as the beholder of the power in the building <laughs> of the person who runs the event, now it appears they are saying... We are not turning the heat on unless you tell us you want the heat on, which is so funny to me because I'm kind of like, okay. And we're in that weird part of the year where, like, maybe it's warm outside, maybe it's cold outside. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, look at, well, it was NAB this year, right? We had that fluke. Super warm day. The one day, Thursday, it was the day of arrival. And then boom, cold and rainy. Cold and rainy. Right, and everybody was like, well, not everybody, I'm being dramatic, but a lot of people showing up at that Marriott that day in the lobby, they're like, Oh, it's balmy in here, blah, 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 mm -hmm. this and that. One guy got all smart, which I was like, you really have to be that way. But he was like, it's like they want me to take my clothes off in the lobby right here. I and mean, he's just right in front of the front desk, and I'm like, <sighs> I was like, okay. Takes all kinds, you know. But so Some it, people need attention. <laughs> I, I got nothing on that. Um, yeah, no, I think it's uh, – there's so many variables you try to handle and what you do with it. So this is my recommendation to all of y'all as we wrap up. These guys are excellent representations of people that not only uh, can go to an event and have fun at an event, but also make the event a success. It's, an, it's something you consider as an option. I'm saying everybody has to do it, but I also think one of the biggest benefits is you get to – figure out uh how well you fit with said event because i think some people are like well i've never been to this event before i don't know if i'm gonna like it i know some people and i don't know if it's true for the two of you have said to others volunteer because it gives you something to do mm -hmm. so especially if you've never been there before even though you don't know what you're kind of getting into like especially if you're not traveling with friends or that kind of thing you at least know you'll have something like right as opposed to being on your own to just find whatever is going right. on. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and we've had some, we've had some good volunteers already this year that, uh, make me happy. And so they've been, uh, properly enthusiastic to help with the various activities so far. So yeah, that's very cool. So thank you both for coming on and being part of the show. Uh, I'm going to try to do this off the top of my head. So if you're already not familiar, you can find us in very many ways online. Obviously go to cubsoutloud.com, uh, for our blog slash website. Uh, you can send us an email at comesoutloud at gmail.com. You can also give us a ring-a-ding at 361-COL-TALK. 
That's 361-825-6255. I got that wrong. Anyways, look it up. Uh, <laughs> nobody heard the call the line. Anyways, yeah, it's on the web page. <laughs> All the social media is Cubs Out Loud, one word, basically, put together. Um, if you do the podcast online thing, you can give us a thumbs up, subscribe, follow, promote us, that kind of stuff. We'd appreciate it. I'm uh, Gary. I go by Gary Bear 73 online in most of the places. And if anybody would like to get in touch with the two of you, what's your kind of handle or preference for getting in touch with people? Um, for me, mainly on social media is going to be Sir Southern Comfort. Uh, that's S I R S S O U T H E R N C O M F O R T. <laughs> There's two S's, and most people they don't they don't catch it. Sirs. <laughs> Southern, Southern comfort. comfort. They think it's their Southern Comfort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is that? Do you know? Is it a person that kind of goes with just the with the one S? No, no. It was a it was a name back whenever I was in that whole Dom sub relationship oh, okay. with carbs and protein. So, um, so yeah, Sarah Southern Comfort is probably the best way to find me. Okay. Um, so yeah, on Instagram, Tumblr. Yep. Okay. And I am uh, Salty Dog USN on Tumblr, pretty much anywhere, or uh, Kentucky Bubba, uh, Bubba Bear. And you actually have both of those on your name badge. I noticed that. I don't know if that was because I put them that way. You did. Okay. I was like, I don't know. Oh, there's, a, there's not a character limit? Apparently not, because there's a lot of Some characters. Some people on have to learn how to decrease the font size to fit all this shit on a name badge, because <laughs> I was like, Oh, we're being a little extra, are we? We got to put two of our nicknames on there. Next, next year, my name's gonna be Nina Bonina, Osama bin Laden, Jackson Brown, St. James Jr. the third. It'll be eight point font, but it'll all fit on there. Maybe I don't know. No, I teased AJ. I was like, "What is up with Aaron and having two things?" Like, oh, I was like, "Why?" Well, he's the one that made me an entertainer on my bed. So, oh yeah, that was my. That was my script. This is where people think, like, I do such a great job. And I'm like, do you know how many goofs, gaffes have happened? One of the vendors had the wrong color badge holder. A virgin, someone who's never been here before, was at orientation and found out what the colors were, walked up to him and said, your lanyard's the wrong color. And the vendor's like, what? And he's like, yeah, you're, all the vendors are green. Yours isn't green. So the vendor comes to me and's like, why are people telling my badge colors wrong? And I'm like, oh, well, they're right. I was like, my, my bad, like, we'll fix it. It was so funny. He was so befuddled by the fact that a brand new person was calling out this odd detail. And I was like, well, you know, what's up the new we did this year? We tried to color code things. But, yes, yours, I don't know how that happened. Somehow, the, your title on here says, I think it says entertainment. entertainment. Yes. Not, not entertainer. <laughs> entertainment as opposed to volunteer. So I, not, I don't know. I'm waiting for the organ grinder to show up behind me. And I'm supposed to start dancing. <laughs> so yeah so uh thank you all for watching and uh on the audio podcast listening oh yeah sorry uh i should also probably put the plug in before jeffrey the producer has a conniption if you would like any of our lovely merchandise that you happen to see something like what aaron's wearing cubs out loud is on uh zazzle the online store so at zazzle.com slash cubs out loud you can get shirts hats all sorts of different items on there uh different logos over the years that we've had as well, so feel free to do that. Do you want to give a plug to who you're wearing? Oh, this is Swiss Embassy. It's Mary Poppins doing poppers. Um, so it's Mary Poppers. poppers. Yeah, <laughs> I can't do poppers, so I'll wear something that of someone who can. So. <laughs> and you should support the podcast on Patreon. Oh yeah, <laughs> I don't have my paperwork in front of me where we read everything off. But if you go to Patreon.com/slash Cubs Out Loud, you can actually subscribe. I uh, become a patron for as little as a dollar a month. You can help the podcast so we could maybe get better sound equipment for on the road shows and things of that nature. Uh, but this should probably hopefully post our normal Sunday. I got to see if I can get away with that. Internet Wi-Fi is going to be fun for a video file, yeah. but we'll see how it runs uh, in that case. So thank you both for being on the show. I love you both for all the effort and the work this weekend, even this silly little thing on the side. And thank you, Aaron, for keeping me on task with the, don't forget don't forget <laughs> shirts and patreon all that stuff so that's it have a good one y'all bye 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 and see